welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're talking about the various types of grace and the work of salvation, and today we'll talk about being redeemed. Through his death on the cross, as a result of his perfect love for us, Jesus Christ redeemed everyone, believer and unbeliever alike. How was this done, and what was its effect? Well, sometime in the 30s AD, Jesus had just died, and his death was needed to save everyone. We know that much, but save us from what? From sinning? No. The sins of the past are no longer being committed, and the sins of the future haven't been committed yet, but in both cases that's normal. As for the sins of our present, we're still perfectly able to commit those despite the death of Jesus. Did his death save us from the temptation to sin? Not yet, at any rate. We're still tempted, often sorely, to do evil and avoid doing good. It must be something else. The consequences of sin? Eh, not entirely. The death of Jesus didn't stop criminals from being imprisoned for their crimes. Sins still have consequences. As for the idea that Jesus may have died to save us from pain or death, pain and death still exist, and still happen to almost everyone. So it seems pretty clear that neither of those have occurred yet. Did he save us from going to hell? Again, not entirely, because Jesus still warns his disciples against sinning and ending up in hell, even though they are his disciples and will be alive after his death. Therefore, it seems that the death of Jesus doesn't prevent us from sinning, nor does it necessarily keep us from suffering consequences for our sins or even going to hell. So what does the death of Jesus do exactly? In the last episode, we talked about how mortality and the temptation to sin both come not from the unredeemed state of the soul, but from the original sin of Adam. Now, when Jesus died on the cross, he didn't undo Adam's original sin. What he did was to redeem the soul of every human being. So things like mortality and temptation and the possibility of going to hell that's associated with that temptation all remain in effect because none of that is affected by being redeemed. What is affected by redemption is that now people can be forgiven of their sins and can be brought to heaven to live with God. Furthermore, this took place almost immediately after the death of Jesus, as it says in the Gospels. And he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou shalt come into thy kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to thee, this day thou shalt be with me in paradise. Luke 23 42 to 43. While still hanging on the cross itself, Jesus promised heavenly glory to the thief who, in spite of his sins, recognized the justice of the punishment that he was receiving and defended Jesus from mockery by the other thief who was hanging nearby. This proves that the justice of God had finally been satisfied, that the debt had been paid by the sacrifice of Jesus, and human beings could be made perfect and brought into the kingdom of heaven to be with God forever. It also means that repentance, like the kind we see from this thief on the cross, is useful to people in entering the kingdom of heaven. Previously, obedience to God would have kept souls from punishment, but sin would still have kept you a prisoner, even if you were the most righteous person, apart from Jesus, ever. Now, with the debt paid, people are no longer prisoners to their own sins. They can freely choose to turn their back on sin and choose God instead. This was a big, big deal. However, next time, we'll be discussing that second part of the equation, the free choice of souls to avoid further sins and what follows from that, when we talk about justification. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.